The financial assistance from the commercial banks is what we are going to speak in terms of the institutional support. The SIDBI was actually set up with stats for Small Industries Development Bank of India. Good morning and welcome to the second session in Unit 3, Entrepreneurship and Small Business Management, where we are going to talk about the institutional support. Now, what is an institutional support? The financial assistance from the commercial banks is what we are going to speak in terms of the institutional support. We all know that the small scale industry suffers a lot because of the lack of capital. So that's why when we look into the SSI sector, the small scale industry, it confronts several problems despite its strategic importance as a key player in Indian economy. Now, when you see that any of the industrialization strategy or any of the employment generation program that happens, always we try to include the small scale industry. And that is very, very important. That's very, very, you know, useful enough in terms of generating to the next level in terms of the economy and growth. But in spite of all this importance, in spite of all the focus that has been given by the government in terms of making the small scale industry a powerful sector by itself, still the small scale industries lack a lot in terms of financial assistance and also the manpower. Now, when we specifically talk about the financial power, when we talk about the assistance that has been spoken about, the large scale companies or the multinational companies have got a quite a good presence and tie up with several commercial banks. Whereas the small scale industry, they are not readily accepted by the commercial banks because of which what happens, the government has tried to bring in certain amount of support, certain amount of, uh, you know, the new sectors or new banks, new institutions, which can go further be focused enough in terms of delivering and they can start helping the SSI sector. That's what we see here. The government of India recognized the need for a focused credit policy for the small scale and its promotion. Why? Because today the government has understood that if you want to make the small scale industry powerful, we need to focus and bring in plans that can help it. So for the government, it becomes very, very important here to focus on the growth, on the development of these sectors. And this is how they have planned for it. The first thing is that they are talking about the priority Priority sector lending. Credit to small scale sector ensured as a part of the priority by leading by banks. It is required to compulsorily ensure that the defined percentage, that is 40% of overall lending classified by the government, it also includes agriculture, small scale industries, and export houses together. Now, what the government has tried to do is that they want to provide credit to the small scale sector as a part of a priority itself. So what they have done is they have allocated 40% of the total lending program focused more towards the small scale industries. So that is why what the government is now trying to do is that it is trying to build in a compulsory program, a compulsory plan system altogether through which it will be able to develop and help that particular industry altogether. And this industry is definitely going to take into consideration agriculture, the small scale industry, export houses, cottage industries and other factors. Why? Because these industries are going to make a huge amount of difference to the global center, to the economy altogether followed by the institutional arrangement. Whenever we talk about this word called as the institutional arrangement, we mean to say that there are specific institutes which are being set up by the government of India providing specific support and providing specific kind of delivery towards the small scale sector. 
Now, not every bank will be interested in providing money to the rural and to the village setup. The reason is very, very simple because they feel that every time we will not be in a position to help them out, we will not be in a position to give them all the benefits that they require. And secondly, the small scale sector is very, very slow in terms of development. So the rate of return and other factors might also delay for them. So in that case, Case, in that category altogether, what happens here is that we go and try to set up specific institutes which can actually help in terms of development. One such institute which I would always like to talk upon here is the SIDBI. The SIDBI was actually set up which starts for Small Industries Development Bank of India. That's what the SIDBI stands for, the Small Industries Development Bank of India, which was set up as an Apex Refinance Bank. Now, what is an Apex Refinance, which means to say the topmost bank in terms of refinancing the small scale industries. What they did is that they started providing term loans for by the state finance corporations and by the scheduled banks. Now, the credit lending is direct and indirect forms are also undertaken by the NABAD and the National Small Industries Corporation. So what is happening is the SIDBI forms one of the most important factor in terms of providing term loans followed by NABAD, followed by the National Small Industries Corporation. All these factors join hand with the SIDBI in terms of providing better credit facilities to that small time entrepreneurs. And SIDBI takes a moral support, a moral lending position in terms of helping out the small scale entrepreneurs and leaders who can actually go further and try to help these people in terms of coming forward and helping the entrepreneurs to grow better. Followed by some of the credit needs of the SSI due to liberalization is that earmarking of credit for of the tiny sector overall lending to the smaller industries this is becoming very very important why because even the small scale industries say it very very clearly that they need to have a clear cut benchmarking they need to have a clear cut allocation altogether which will actually help them to overcome the industrial sector in terms of the financing in terms of allocation of funds so the small scale sectors today are also demanding for a lot of factors which can actually help them to learn and to grow better in terms of the financing followed by opening of specialized SSI branches specific branches which are being created only for the small scale industries so that they can continue their support year long followed by establishment of national equity fund for the venture capital support now what does this happen here is that they say it very very clearly that you have to set up the national equity fund for the venture capital support which is very very important now in that case what is going to happen is that for the venture capital support as we are trying to speak we need to understand how the support is coming in what are all the factors under which we are looking into it and how these sectors can actually help in terms of promoting it so this is very very important for all of us to understand the importance of the national equity fund and the venture capitalist support altogether followed by the technology development and modernization fund through the SIDBI. The other side, the small scale industries also will require a lot of importance, a lot of need coming in forward in terms of technology upgradation and modernization through the SIDBI. So that is also going to play a very, very important role here. Followed by enhancement of turnover limit for assessing aggregate working capital requirement, which is becoming very, very important. Why? Because whenever we talk about the limitation of funds these days, 
the chances are there that for the larger companies, they give a lot of preference, they give a lot of ideas, they give a lot of movement altogether. Whereas in the case of the small scale industry, there needs to be a hike in terms of their turnover limits, which will actually help them to increase the working capital and will also help them to provide that timely help in terms of doing the business at any given point of time followed by enhancement of the composite loan to 10 lakhs altogether which was needed why because earlier this 5 lakhs 3 lakhs 2 lakhs said to be a very very small amount so what they seek is an enhancement of the limit up to 10 lakhs so that it is very very helpful for all these people to do it better and take it forward no collateral security loans up to 5 lakhs so up to 5 lakhs if you are starting a very small a tiny industry altogether you don't need to have any sort of collateral security at all probably that's what we have been now speaking about in different forms that has come out from the prime minister's yojanas and other schemes where we are trying to say that we don't need any collaterals we don't need any security or support up to 5 lakhs the comprehensive policy package on this credit cards are about the launch of credit guarantee scheme to cover the loans up to 25 lakhs which is becoming very important the launch of credit linked capital subsidy scheme to provide subsidy against loan taken up for technology upgradation which means to say that now if they are also going to provide a capital based fund specifically for the technology upgradation as you know that now technology and the digital media world are playing a great importance in most of the industry the same thing applies also for the small scale industry now when we talk about this technology upgradation it becomes important for this sector because they have to spend a lot of money into it so they need assistance in terms of technology upgradation and this is the right time where SSI comes forward in terms of providing them money and if you look here the launch of credit guarantee scheme which is going to help them to a big amount of 25 lakhs which is definitely going to pay a very important factor as the seed capital followed by the financial assistance from commercial banks where we have also gone the ceiling for composite loan to go up to 25 lakhs which is becoming very important these days why because when we are giving further enhancement of ceiling composite loan is worth up to 25 lakhs we are giving then the enhancement of project costs under the national equity fund which is going to come up to 50 lakhs so you are able to see that the government has now started raising up the limit for the small scale industries to the maximum level possible so that the small scale industries are not affected and they are able to provide a better remuneration and return altogether so that is why this is going to be a very very important factor here followed by some of the schemes of the SBI where we are going to talk about for the SSI why because major commercial bank definitely we need to take into account the state bank of India for the SSI sector the general purpose term loan that we are talking about it grants loan for the SSI to meet on commercial purposes like the high cost debt research and development net worth and funding business which is coming up in a very very big way altogether the term loan which is normally for three years and the pricing is turned to suit the risk of the borrowers so this is also becoming quite interesting for all of us to know why because the term loan is normally for three years that has been provided and the pricing is done in such a manner where a low interest is being charged to these people and they would be able to repay back on time so that's why the repayment is strictly done on a monthly or quarterly installments they are giving a lot of time in terms of settling down and providing you a base level interest so that the entrepreneurs can go back renew the fund they are able to generate it and they are able to give it across so definitely SBI being the leader among all the public sector banks has come forward with a lot of scheme to help the small scale industries and they are able to provide them a better return followed by the liberalized credit altogether SBI has also started extending production support to link credit facilities of 
the SSI specially to the ancillary units of manufacturing in automobile and spare parts, the cotton industries, certain terms and conditions that have gone through them all together. The price of the loan is based on the credit assessment rates here, followed by the composite loan sanction up to 25 lakhs, combining the working capital here. So what is happening here is that we are trying to see that this composite factor is actually helping them to go further, learn it across and take it in terms of the production sector altogether. So this is very, very important. This is highly needed in terms of the practice, in terms of moving it together. And it has also been seen that with the combination of the working capital coming into picture, the loan rates have also come down and they have been able to help the SSI to move further. Now the entrepreneur scheme, which is also another part of the scheme started by the SBI, it grants financial assistance to technically qualified, trained and experienced entrepreneurs altogether. The loans are extended to technocrats under the liberalized scheme, which is coming up in a big way. It is applicable to technically qualified craftsmen, industrial management unit people, and the bank also provides term loans together. Now, when you look into an entrepreneur scheme, what we are trying to see here is that there are well-qualified, young, energetic entrepreneurs who are available in India and their primary objective, their primary aim is to see that they are trying to move themselves into more qualified zones, into more experienced areas and very, very, you know, skill-based applications altogether. For those kind of setups, the loans are being extended under a more liberalized scheme and it is also applicable for semi-technically qualified people like when we talk about the craftsman or the industrial management person so that they are able to come forward and they are also able to run through their dreams. Plus, the bank is also providing in term loans, working capital and equity fund scheme altogether. Now, all these things will definitely help the entrepreneurship to come up in a very big way followed by the equity fund scheme which is coming up the equity fund scheme grants sbi the financial assistance to the entrepreneurs who are not able to meet their share of equity now that becomes quite interesting and important for us why because interest-free loans are repayable over a long period of time so that is mandatory where you are able to repay back these loans as quick as possible as early as possible which will actually help you to understand and take the things in a better manner altogether equity fund assistance can be normally repaid over five to seven years which has become very very important especially after the moratorium period so when you see that the equity fund assistance can be done and this has been given with a lot of uh, you know facilities and a lot of gap in terms of to understand the entrepreneurship not to give them any sort of pressure and give them a smooth flow of funds in the coming years followed by the three Shakti package, a package which has been exclusively developed for the women entrepreneurs. It is uniquely run as a scheme by the SBI to support the women entrepreneurs by providing a certain concessions here altogether. And it would have provided more than 50% of its capital owned by the women to qualify for the scheme. So what we are trying to say here is we are looking up for industry where more than 50% of the capital is owned by the women and run by the women. For them, we have the three Shakti package, which is actually coming up as a boon from the major banks followed by the export finance schemes which we have come across one we are talking about the pre-shipment finance packing credit so when you see into the export scheme altogether there's a lot of money that is involved in terms of packing shipping delivery so even in those areas you will see that there's a packing credit which has been provided a clean packing credit pre-shipment post-shipment finance which are coming in in terms of full on board and then we talk about the foreign bank guarantees that are coming in which is including the deferred payment the bank will pay on behalf of you 
to the foreign client and then you can repay it to the bank. The foreign letters of credit, what we call as the LOC, the letter of credit altogether, which is both for the import of raw materials as well as for the capital goods that we are talking about. So all these factors are also directly pushing the export and growth of the economy. Because when we talk about the GDP growth altogether, higher the export, higher is going to be the GDP factor. So our focus in terms of promoting the GDP and taking it to the next level, we need to have a lot of export finance schemes which can actually make the system even more interesting followed by the financial assistance provided by KSIDC, now which we call it as the Karnataka State Industrial Development Corporation, which has been providing a lot of promotional based schemes in terms of the development and growth. It provides financial assistance in terms of medium and long term loans, equipment financing and the direct equity. So the state level activity that has been taken up by the government is quite commendable because they have understood that Karnataka state has got a lot of medium and large scale industries which need to be developed over a period of time and it has started accepting applications for financing as per the standard loan which is actually a very big blessing in disguise for the young entrepreneurs especially in the field of manufacturing through which they are able to see a rapid growth altogether. Followed by the case IDC is also formerly known as the Mysore Small Industries Corporation and now it has been providing service to the sector for more than 40 years. In 1960, Karnataka state government with the help of the Department of Industries and Commerce, they had set up this SSI. So right from 1960 onwards to almost now 60 years plus, we have seen a major development that has happened in this state with a lot of industrial units, the Silicon Valley coming up the setup of electronic city, the, select, uh, the setting up of manufacturing units in and around of Karnataka has definitely been one of the rapid stride made by this government in terms of promoting the business and taking it forward to the next league. So with this, we also look into the KSIDC, which took over the uh, activities in terms of the related to management, related to the setting up of industrial sectors with the raw materials and other factors. It has started up with a capital of 10 lakhs. And now the government will also go ahead and contribute during the first 10 years up to 20 lakhs. That's what we have been seeing. The paid up capital of the uh, KSIDC is somewhere worth about 2,466 lakhs, which is roughly about when you see, start seeing it, it's more than in crores altogether. And this is a, one of the biggest industrial sectoral firm that we are seeing in terms of promoting entrepreneurship and growth. Followed by the IFIC, now the financial assistant that comes even from KSIDC and the IFCI, which was set up as an industrial a factor altogether all over India started in the year 1948 and then it started growing up as a sector in terms of promoting all the small scale industries here. So definitely the IFCI is also one of the major industrial sector which has been promoting the small scale development and with a tune to about 453 billion to its capital it has been one of the biggest financiers when it comes to the small scale industries. With this, I come to the end of this particular session. I hope and believe that all the information that has been shared through this particular slide and through these sessions would have been of a great information, great resource and help to you. So in the upcoming sessions, we shall learn more about the institutional support, the financial activities that have been provided for the small scale industries to survive and grow. But until then, stay tuned, stay blessed and stay enlightened forever. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.